Holla at your boy. It's your boy LAK. Yeah, once again, us TV. Looking fresh, looking clean, looking like me. Yazine. Late bloomers, holla at your boy. More hats coming soon. Yeah. Just whipped up a meal real quick. Mm. We gonna uh, chop it up while I feed my body these uh, nutrients. Bananas, yams, red potatoes, seasoning. Feel me? A little scallion, onions, peppers, thyme, pimento. Sticking to the tempo. Scoop of sea moss. And my special recipes, you know. Add a little oomph to the uh, scenario. And, uh,. Talk about the uh, the building of one's consciousness in the process that that one has to go through to deal with um, the shadow aspect of defeating the subconscious mind to have a conscious view on things, right? And to be conscious about your level of of perspective and awareness and being aware of doing the things that you say you can do. And affirming and learning a route that fits you, that leads you to the path of enlightenment or awareness because everyone has their own, um, like that swoop like that, right? That was a new style right there. That was something, that was something dope, right? Everyone has their own path of enlightenment. That's why the stories are broken up in so many different forms. Right? And we learn about these different characters of how they overcame um, tribulations that led to them coming to a point of accepting uh, their purpose. And, and finding their purpose. Based off of all these different challenges that they were faced with and what it took to keep them in a positive state of mind. Right? And why each story has its own narrative that allows people with different perspectives, they can use it to tap in 
to their um, path of enlightenment. So you have Buddhism, you have Christianity, Islam, the streets, um, you have yogis, and they all have their different formulas to get to their path. That's why there's different situations and different um, ministries and different um, structures that allows one to be delivered based off the choice of uh, of perspective that fits them, right? And I learned different perspective not to talk about one or the other and be specific about which one was better for me and which one was not good for me and stuff like that. I looked at what was working for me and how did it allow me to feel and what was the results that I was gaining from it? And was I willing to live out the testimonies and the stories that were displayed to me without being judged by others, knowing that if I fulfill the story of how I read it, and if I believed in the narrative so much that if I put myself in the position of these characters and I knew what the outcome was going to be, will I be able to fulfill the narrative and the outcome of these um, stories that were given to us to use as a guide to get to a certain level or a certain status in life or to get to a certain peace of mind? that allowed you to tap into the God level consciousness of um, awareness or God level consciousness of belief and faith. Mm. See that working right now. You can sleep in my body, you feel me? A little spicy, you know? And applying those concepts and applying those stories and going through the motions and the notions of having the faith of Job and the inquisitiveness of Buddha and um, the, uh, the affirmations of, of Malcolm X and the, and the uh, confident of speech you know, and uh, the dream like Martin Luther King, you know, and to be a king like Isaiah, you know, and what was LAK's story? what was Kamar's story so that he can create the narrative for Karate Lee, Kendall Lee, right? And, and live out, live, that, live out that narrative, create the narrative, set forth the narrative, believe in the narrative, And to create um, a path, the best way, the best way I could and can, right? I can. So the best oppor opportunity I was created, so that I could put her in the best position to live out her narrative. 
to when she gets to a certain point that she's able to be aware that her path is going to be set forth and now she's prepared to take on her own individual path and on using her own unique mind all while the teachings that have been implemented on both sides of the spectrum of parents how can she utilize these tools to become the becoming before she became and the things that we fight and we deal with is the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind is your hater right not all the time but it's the it's the it's the sound and the voice that tells you that you can't do stuff or you're gonna be fearful and you can't do it and all that extra stuff and it's also there so that you can have a, um, a threshold to break so a threshold that in your mind because you have to train your mind to eliminate these voices and to mediate and have a sound mind to mediate the sounds and voices that are around you, the colors, the lights, the perspectives, and still be one within all of those things being um, amplified and learning how to diffuse the sound of distraction so that you can think with a sound mind and affirm. And when you affirm and you combine sound, visual, uh, visualization, planning, and action, you get the results that you want to get for the most part. And when you don't get the results that you you uh, that you that you desire to get you learn how to get better at what you needed improvement on so that you do get the results that you want to on a more efficient percentage but so people do have to affirm about what they're gonna do. You do have to write goals down. You do have to create some type of um, blueprint of what you're gonna do because time is gonna go and time is on a scale. And we live in a, we live in a world where even though we're timeless, we live in a society that's based up on a time scale. And on that time scale, you have to figure out what can I do today that's gonna to get me ahead tomorrow. What? Or put me in position to get closer to where I need to be every single day. So if you took the same um the same concepts of what you were doing with your day and you applied it to your goals, you get there faster and You'll get more results and you'll get more formulas that lead to the results that you want to obtain. So just look at what you're doing and say, okay, well, today I'm going to cook, right? And oh, I'm gonna, all right, today I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to buy this. Today I'm going to go get this. Today I'm going to go get that. I'm going to go to get some new sneakers. I'm going to go get my hair done. Females are going to get their nails done. Stuff like that. It's the same concept. Instead of you want to get results in certain situations or certain aspects, you have to write down the formula to your success because it may differ from everybody else's success. And that's why there's so many chapters in these novels, in these books, because everyone had their own formula of how they were gonna get to a certain plateau of um, success or 
overcoming whatever um, obstacles was placed in front of them or how each person had to channel their faith to get to an understanding or how each person was left a scroll or a scribe or a a pyrus, I think, yeah, to to take that um, blueprint and create the next phase of mm -hmm. steps that lead to the evolution of the next plateau of becoming and the the enhancement of the formulas or using certain formulas that are proven to work and sticking with those formulas and learning how to expedite the process so that the next person don't have to go through those struggles that you went through. And those are things that you have to learn. And some people are like, yo, why is it not happening for me? Or why this, why, why, why I gotta uh, go through this? Uh, the more you declutter your mind and you know, accept the fact that you are gonna be fighting with thoughts that's in your mind and you do believe that you have the power to defeat those thoughts that's in your mind the conscious mind starts to take over and those thoughts tend to disappear and when the mind starts to the mind starts to know that okay yo his mind is starting to eliminate the negativity that that lingers in the mind right the negativity that prevents you from from making those steps or making those decisions or doing certain things the subconscious mind will always pop up like boom like you can't do it or um certain images that are like screenshotted in your mind you're like okay i, I gotta get rid of that thought it, it'll pop up naturally because it's embedded in your mind right but it's just like a computer the computer has information that's in there that you gotta defrag it you feel me has to be cleared, it has to be updated, just like phones. You gotta update the information every once so often because your mind becomes over, um, it becomes system overload and you gotta clear your mind. Every so often, the same patterns happen over and over again. Every year, the same thing happens over and over again so that your mind could create new patterns and see if the old patterns are still there or if the new patterns outweigh the new patterns. I mean, the new patterns outweigh the old patterns. And then you start to expedite the process based off of the timing of your divine um, clock, your divine clock. So the faster you tell yourself, yo, this is where I see myself and this is where I wanna be and this is how it's gonna happen. And you put that in writing and you make that happen, the divine clock starts to work in your favor and you start to get the results you need, sometimes without even putting in the labor because the universe is molding you to feel and to look how you're supposed to look or how you want to look or how you pertain or how you see yourself. So knowing, knowing these things and you start to see the results, you start to get addicted with the results. The thing that happens is sometimes is sometimes we get a result so fast that we want more results and the mind starts to linger saying, oh, why am I getting the results that I need to at this specific time? And why is this not working? Why is that it's not working? And that's when the subconscious mind starts to kick in. 
but then you also have to take time for yourself to mediate those thoughts so that when you're mediating those thoughts, it doesn't over consume your energy so that your energy can glow. Feel me? Your energy could glow and you can become the energy and the person that you want to be and you can express yourself um, consciously and clearly without um, having to fight with the negativity that lingers from your timeline of living in this world and the society and the opinions and stuff like that. So there is a reason why there's a a, a Michael Jordan and a Kobe and a and a um, Tom Brady and these figures that we look up to, uh, Oprah Winfrey, um, a Jay Z or all these different people, right? And they always talk about the mind and how they could channel their energy and see things or confirm things and affirm things before they happen. Same thing with myself. If I want to win a game, I win the game, right? If I lost the game, I won the game um, the next time, right? When I play the game, right? Or I become a part of a, a situation, I've learned to learn the different aspects of the game. So sometimes I don't have to play or I play different positions based off me studying how to be a part of the structure of what creates the game, All right? So I could be a passer. I could be a point guard. I know the role of a center. I know the role of an owner. I know the role of a consumer. I know the role of a manager. I know the role of a supervisor. I know the role of a janitor. I know the role of um, a journalist or a blogger or an artist, a rapper, different things. I know these roles, a model, the photography, the angles, stuff like that. So once you start learning these things, now that these thoughts are cluttering and all these different things is flowing through your mind, you have to compartmentalize how you think and how you see things and how to put things in perspective and channel them and put them in brackets of organization so that a lot is not going on unless it's on the t-shirt and you're selling it for buku money and you're LAK. So you learn it's how to confirmation. You learn to compartmentalize these things and put things in perspective and in categories so that you're not over consumed with the limitation of time, but you putting things in perspective of the time scale so that each agenda gets achieved based off of your organization of time and allocation of um, knowledge, right? Your allocation of knowledge. So, how does one put it all together? Be organized with it, not overthink, and sometimes accept that you will overthink and not let the thinking paralyze you to where you don't make those steps to get to a certain level or when to not take the steps and when to take a step back so that when you're ready to take the the uh, the, the, 20, the two steps back to take 20 steps forward, you're, you're prepared based off of the time you took to remove yourself from a situation only to 
take a quantum leap into the next phase of life. And that's what the book is about, phases. And being able to withstand the transition of phases by the patience that you have to have and allowing yourself to go through the phases based off of the enlightenment, the enlightenment, the enlight enlightenment path that you chose to take based off of the tools that you were given, stories that you read, um, pictures that you seen, testimonies that you heard from different people. If you haven't never read a book or if you lived in certain demographics and region, how did you take those um, depiction of life to put yourself where you want to be and not where everyone else wants you to be? And are you comfortable with being in the position that you're in knowing that you're getting to that position and can you see yourself in that position already? Can you live through the critique of someone not understanding you? Can you express yourself knowing that someone is going to challenge you to alter your route of how you see things and how you want to channel your energy or where you see yourself going? Can you express and articulate yourself to let people know that I see myself living like this or I want to be in this direction or I am this type of person and I, I understand what you're saying, but this is what I'm saying, right? Can you learn the phases? Can you study other people that came before you that had proven success to put yourself in a position, position of success and learn the goods and the bads of that process so that you sustain a peace of mind, success, and you can express yourself and express yourself to the point where the judgment doesn't really affect you. It only makes you more proactive in the direction of where you're trying to go. So you learn how to channel criticism, critique, distractions, and put that in a direction to where it it levels you no matter sometimes what decision you make, right? Because momentarily you could be like, okay, that was a bad decision, but then it puts you on a path of righteousness or puts you on a path of enlightenment or it's something to write a book about. It's something to uh, make a song about. It's something that was that was there to give you enlightenment. You feel me? Because what happens, it enlightens you. That's the thing. Like people be thinking that enlightenment is just this ah uh, moment of like a light shining on you, and it's like, ooh, I, he gets it. No, it's not that. Enlightenment is a revelation. You feel me? It's what's revealed in the path of darkness, right? And what's revealed in the path of darkness is the levels of the rebels, you feel me? And the inquisitiveness of learning so that when you want to um, learn about something, they put it in a book or they put it on a blog, right? And they put it on a lampstand so that you put the bulb in because without the when the lampstand was just there, it was dark and then you put the bulb in and now you have a moment of being in light. And now you're enlightened because you can see what's in the room. And your body is the stand, the mind is the bulb, and 
you light up when you make a conscious decision to want to think in a certain light and perspective that you chose to think in, right? Because dark and light is also the same thing. So if you chose to be in a dark room of light, then you chose to be in that dark room of light and it's nothing wrong with that because each hue sets a mood of a decision that you wanted to be in or you want to be in. So sometimes the dark is a moment of learning and the light is the moment of learning. And each one is the same because you could be in a room of light and still be in the dark to what's going on in the room and still be in the dark, right? Or, or being in the dark and not seeing the light of what's going on in the room. You feel me? So that enlightenment moments is of just having vision of being able to see different shades of um, perspectives in a spectrum that allows you to use the tools of imagination and use the tools of reality and learn how to compartmentalize and organize organize decisions and be instinctive based off of the tools that you want to learn and you will put yourself in categories based off of who you modeled yourself after you feel me who did you model yourself after because you're going to make decisions like them you feel me think like k always do the work you feel me and when you model yourself after certain people who are in a certain community, then you start to be a part of that demographic of wealth or whatever you desire to be, you start to put yourself in that area. And I desired to be wealthy, all about the wealth, born wealthy, art sums, Jazz America, late bloomers, in a stance of success and enlightenment and what late bloomers achieved in America or in the world and how they did it and what made them become uh, the becoming before the becoming. So, it's easy concepts to learn. Tough road to walk. Right? Tough road to walk, easy concepts to learn. What does that mean? The world. Mm hmm? Talking to the world. Tough road to walk. Easy concept to learn. Generation. A lot of results come when you accept the path, right? Like Jesus, right? When you accept the path of the righteous, like Jesus, right? Be like God, right? And when you accept the uh, faith, like like Job, like um, Joseph, Moses. Am I? Uh, uh, when you accept these pathways and you study the novels of them, you got to not just preach them, but live the story based off what you read to see if those stories come to life based off your testimony, right? Test the money, which is the currency of the energy that makes the world go around, right? The testimony, 
right? Test the money in the light because they're going to put the dollar up to the light to see if it's real. So they're going to put me up to the light to see if I'm real, but I always do the work because that's how I move and I was ordained to be, right? So with me saying that, book out right now, become before becoming, before she starts uh, going in, right? And I got to explain um, why she has a great son and why I was sent here to uh, do what I do. Jazz America, late bloomers, how about your boy?